I'm gonna share with you today how I made a high-end music video using only $24 and some amazing software. And the software is free, that's not where the $20 went. If you've been creating videos for a while, some of these things might sound obvious to you, but either way, I'm sure you'll find something extremely interesting as I did along the process. One of the things that I've always gone back to, no matter what it is, what I'm doing, what I'm filming, is always the most fundamental key and the biggest element in making things look cinematic. Cinematic, and I'll come back to that in a second. But first, make sure to subscribe and watch the music video if you find this helpful. The link is in the description below. Now, let me introduce the software that I used to create these visuals, the things that were not shot in camera. Blender was one of the biggest softwares that I used, mainly because it's free. You could just download it online and install it in your computer. And I, <laughs> I feel like this is giving filmmakers an Uzi. It's insane. You can do just about anything from modeling to texturing to animating to compositing. Now, this doesn't mean that it doesn't have limitations because it can do so many things, some of the aspects or some of the things it can do are more limited than others. So for that reason, I had to jump around from different programs in order to get the most out of those programs or the programs that focus on that particular thing the most. But I do want to note that I learned this in three months and it's really not that difficult once you grasp the basics. Now, when you first open it up, it can be extremely intimidating because there's a bunch of windows and buttons and things that you just don't know what to do with. But I assure you the learning curve is not very big. And once you start to understand and think like the program, more ideas will come out of that. Like I mentioned, Blender is free and it has a huge community of users who share tutorials and resources and make it a lot easier for you to get started. When making music videos, I try to approach them in a more David Lynch kind of way, which is just letting the images kind of develop on their own. And if I think it's interesting, I'll start trying to see how that can be assembled or if it can be assembled in a manageable fashion. And from that point on, I'll start adding more shots and sequences to see how it all flows together. And of course, making changes along the way if I need to. The one golden rule is always fast, good, cheap, and you can only choose two out of this pyramid. And that's something a friend of mine taught me and it's just stuck with me. And it's true, if you want to get things done quickly, it's not gonna be in an affordable way. And if you want things to be good, it's not gonna be in a fast way, right? So if you want it to be fast and good, then you probably need a lot of money because you're gonna need a bigger crew. But if you're willing to take your time and chase the results that you are after, then you can accomplish them because time is the one thing we have until we die. When learning Blender, I wanted to start with something simple because I didn't want to bog my head with details that I couldn't wrap my head around. So the UFO was the first thing that I approached. I mean, it's pretty easy, right? It's just a sphere flattened with some textures on it and some lights in the material, which I found out is pretty easy to do in Blender. So that's what I did. And the second element to this was to composite that in front of a real background. Out of that UFO idea, I had my second image, which was of me opening up the track with butterflies circling around my head. I was able to find a butterfly online for free, remodel the body, face, and retexture it. And I found out pretty quickly that you can just multiply these butterflies or these objects and turn them into what's called a particle system, a void particle system, and have them behave like uh, butterflies would, flying around. So that was the second thing, and it actually didn't take me that long. Again, when you start to think like this program, you start to realize the things that it can and cannot do. And for a lot of these things, it's actually just set it up and go. And the part that takes long is the setup. But once you have a setup and once you have an idea or a clear thought of what it is that you're trying to achieve, you'll quickly find that it's very doable for the most part, especially when you're dealing with hard surfaces and things that are non-organic. In the case of a butterfly, it's a very simple object. It's just the butterfly and its wings, right? And okay, you have its legs and its antennas and they also move in its head. What we're seeing is the wings do most of the movement. When I found out that hard surface objects are easier to do, I tried to stick to that. The mechanical arms I found online, I changed the textures and rigged them and animated them. The mechanical spider was also something that I just made from scratch because mostly it's just a bunch of spheres, cylinders, and rectangles put together with some textures. I rigged it and animated it as well. The thing that I wanted to go back to and the most important thing and the thing that I think for me is always the most consistent in everything that I film is, it's gonna seem obvious, but yes, it's lighting. Lighting is crucial to everything and anything you do, whether it's in 3D program or in real life. 
and the most fundamental thing is three-point lighting. It becomes extremely useful for almost everything once you grasp the basics. Everything that looks cinematic is usually because it's rim lit and there's a key light. Yeah, sure, you can put in a fill light and fill it up some more, but I tend to usually just keep it really simple. Rim lights, key light, that's it. Now, some of these objects do have a different kind of lighting and that's just because I wanted it to feel like an operating room, white and clean. But for the most part, I do try to lean more towards rim lights, key light. Another element of this that I haven't spoken about is the ghost. The ghost is, well, it's just a ghost. It's just a sheet. But it has to be made in a software called Marvelous Designer. Marvelous Designer, for those of you who don't know, is specifically made to create and simulate clothing. It's, again, also not something too difficult. Everything works in the same way that it would in the real world, meaning that you have to cut clothes in the way that you would in the real world. Now, a sweater doesn't look the way that you think it does before it's put together. So that's the hack there. Figuring out how those things look and stitching them together in the software and eventually animating them. For this, sometimes you do need your 3D mesh or your 3D character from another software, which does lead me to a complicated part. Okay, all right, I lied. There is one complicated part. For me to get this shot of me levitating in the air, I tried to shoot myself against the green screen and I look like a complete idiot. Now, I had to try it because this seemed like the most simplest approach because there was another thing that was kind of piling up in the back of my head and that was metahumans. Now, metahumans are going to develop and they're going to change and they're going to get easier and easier to deal with. Apparently, there's a bunch of tutorials on how to get a 3D mesh scan of your face into a metahuman, which you can find anywhere on YouTube. So I went down that route. Now, keep in mind that when I said hard surfaces are easy to animate and easy to create, that is true. So when you're dealing with metahumans and organic objects and particle systems for hair, it begins to get complicated very quickly. But I didn't see any other way of approaching this, so I learned how to create a 3D scan of my face, put it on a metahuman, and do some minor animation. But there was one huge catch to all of this. The challenge was that the metahuman wasn't wearing what I was wearing in the video, so I had to jump back into Marvelous Designer for that and use the U-Draper plugin in Unreal Engine to simulate the clothing in real time. And lastly, compositing, editing, and color grading were the last things I did to complete the video. And where did the $24 get spent? Well, I needed some clothes for this shot, which is basically just a hazmat suit and a raincoat. And that's pretty much it. I hope that you at the very least got an overview on how to maybe approach things or what the possibilities are out there as they keep getting easier and easier, especially with programs like Midjourney and Unreal Engine, which speed up the render time by a ridiculous amount. If you're interested in a more detailed step-by-step -step process, I've attached some of the YouTube tutorials I used to make this video below. And if there's anything in specific that you're interested in, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to include it in the next video. 